I want to show you another color control system called the color picker. Now I've got a rectangle here that's uh, sitting there in the middle of my artboard and um, let's see, let's set that and arrange that so my zero starts from the top to the bottom. And um, I'm not sure I like that orange. So I'm going to click on the orange that I have here right on the um, face of the fill, click click. And I get the color picker. Now this is a open and close rather than like the palette that we have down here with the color sliders on it. But it's a pretty good way to deal with making choices so that uh, when you see the color picker it always is set up so that the white is in this upper left corner, black is in this lower left corner, the black with the pure color is here, which is pretty much black because you have black to anything, it gets dark. And then the pure color is up here in the upper right corner. Now, <clears throat> these arrows here show you in the field that you're in. You know, yellows and beiges and greens and blues. If I go up into the blue, I can get a warm blue or a, a really cold blue, gray blue, whatever that slider gives me in the neighborhood. And then wherever I click my brush or my little circle thing here, you can see that color showing up here. This is the last color I had. So there's pure white and there's pure black. And here in the middle is a combination of black and white to get a gray. And then you can find little uh, colors up in here that are the color but very light or the color and very dark, that writing black. And so you can move through there and pick a color that you think works best for this situation. Whatever color you pick, it gives you down here the CMYK numbers, 188 percentages, uh, to show you where you are. If you wanted a gray blue, you know, over here, and it shows you if you want to record that where it goes. And you can, um, if you want to make this color that gray, then I hit OK. Now it was orange, now it's going to be that gray. If I want that, keep that gray, now I go to swatches and I say save that. And it shows up right here. As, as that gray. And again, I could give it a name or a project name or a client name or whatever I'm dealing with to have that color work. But as I click on the color picker and it opens up, then I can go and find uh, colors that work for me. We can, we can work with any color in printing. If this little yellow triangle shows up here, that means that if you were doing this for a website, if you were making something in Illustrator that was eventually going to go on a website, they don't have as many colors to deal with. Uh, they're very much limited to about 250 colors, as opposed to millions that we can get by fiddling around with uh, wherever we're going here. It also will give you hues and saturation and brightness and the RGB colors, uh, which is really electronic colors, red, green, and blue. We say CMYK here, but uh, that's for the printer people, for the real television that we're working with in um, these monitors for Illustrator or Photoshop is um, RGB. As a matter of fact, in, in Photoshop, we just call it RGB. We don't use CMYK as much. But uh, if you go there to saturation, it gives you different fields and color explanation is could be endless. And you, now you're going through these rainbow bars and you're finding the rainbow bars Here's the pure color, and here's the color that's subtracted into that gray. So if I get another color going on there, then you, it changes around. But don't worry about all these RGBs and stuff then. And just go with a hue. That's the value or the color. We call it red. could be warm red or cool red. But go with that. And then as you uh, like a color and save it to there, then be sure and save it back into your swatches if, if you intend to use that color as you go through uh, the projects that you're working on.